Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for our unit on forces and their effects, today we're going to see how we can find speed. So, uh, as a purpose for today's lesson, we're going to see the factors involved in defining speed. We're going to explain a simple method to measure speed, and at the end, we'll be able to use the speed formula. Let's consider a very simple problem. Okay, so we have to uh, students, we have Antonia and Brian, and let's see what um, it says about them. Antonia walks 1,200 meters in 15 minutes, while Brian walks 5 kilometers in one hour. Who is walking faster? Now, of course, there are several ways we can approach um, this question. For instance, uh, you might want to say, okay, um, let's make the time the same no i see that 15 minutes okay it's a four for an hour so i could take this number and multiply by four that means also this distance is multiplied by four and if i do this it will come out that antonia walked uh i mean if she keeps the same speed will be walking 400 800 meet 4800 meters in one hour Again, this might not be helpful because here we have kilometers, so we need to change that into kilometers. If I change 4,800 meters in uh, kilometers, it will be 4.8 kilometers, which is less than 5. So Brian is walking faster because uh, in the same amount of time, he walked a bigger amount of uh, a longer distance. An opposite approach would be to take this number and divide it by four, no? Because in order to get 15 minutes, I take an hour divided by four, and if I take five and divide it by four, I will get uh, 1.25 kilometers. Or if I convert that in meters, will be 1,250 meters, which again is bigger than uh, the uh, distance walked by Antonia. So also with this approach, we can say that Brian walked a longer distance. So we know that in order to define the speed of an object, and actually uh, we're going to say it's the average speed. I will explain this better in class, but what we're talking about here, it's not the actual speed, but is the average speed involves the distance traveled which, of course, since we're using the international system of units, will be normally measured in meters and the time taken to travel that distance. And again, since we're using the international system of units, we're normally going to measure that in seconds. And the average speed is defined as the ratio between these two quantities. What does ratio mean? It means the division, means distance traveled divided by time taken. And maybe it's better if we see this as a formula, so it will be easier for us to understand how these uh, three physical quantities are related. So let's write down here our formula. And as you can see, you know, speed, now I, I, I didn't write average speed, but this is what we mean. Average speed equals to distance over uh, this 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 stands for dividing so it's a ratio over time so speed equal distance over time you've heard this before but this is really the formula to find the average speed now this is a word formula for those of you who did already some chemistry you might have done word equations but you know that in chemistry we do prefer to use symbol equations and the same goes for physics it's easier, it's quicker um, to use symbols instead of words. So let's see how we can rewrite the same, uh, the same formula using symbols. Now, let's start with distance. Now, not surprisingly, the symbol for distance is D. So I'll write D slash, the symbol for time is T. Now, this is really important. The symbol for speed is not S, but it's V, small v. Stands also for velocity. In later years, we're going to see that speed and velocity are not exactly the same thing. But for uh, our purposes today, 
we're going to uh, use them as synonyms, okay? So V stands for speed, D stands for distance, and T stands for time. So as for every uh, physical quantity that we have seen this year, we need also to define its units. Now, the, unit of, the units of speed do not have their own name, like the newton uh, or the second, etc. They're uh, defined as the units that make up speed. Now, since speed is defined as distance over time, obviously the units of speed will be given by units of distance divided by units of time, which uh, makes it clear that the most common units for speed are the following. For instance, um, most of the time, if we want to talk about the speed of an object, uh, we use kilometers per hour, okay? So how many kilometers you traveled in one hour? If you want to represent that in symbol, it will be km over h. Now, uh, if you come from the United States, on the other hand, you're not using kilometers as a unit for distance, you might be using miles, so you might be uh, referring to another unit known as miles per hour, which is normally uh, abbreviated in MPH. Now, you can see this, for instance, in this speedometer. Now, let's imagine this is a car speedometer, probably from the United States, because the numbers which are bigger are those in miles per hour. Uh, the numbers in red are the numbers for kilometers per hour. But this is useful because also tells you a little bit of the correspondence between kilometers per hour and miles per hour. For instance, if you're traveling at 120 kilometers per hour, which is um, uh, the speed limit in uh, many highways uh, in Italy, uh, that is approximately, approximately uh, close to uh, 70 um, miles per hour, okay? Um, but the unit that we're going to use more often is not the kilometer per hour, not the miles per hour, but meters per second, okay? So we're going to use meters as a unit of distance, seconds as unit of time, and then we have speed in meters per second. Of course, one of the difficulties for us will be exactly to convert from one unit into another. Now, the formula we have seen uh, a few minutes ago, so uh, this uh, speed equal distance over time, is useful for us if uh, uh, we know the distance traveled, we know the time taken, and we need to find the speed. But uh, it might be that sometimes you know the speed at which you're traveling, you know the time it took you, you want to find how much distance you call it. Or uh, you know how fast you're going, you, you want to go, you know the distance you want to cover, and you want to figure out, okay, how much time it will take me. So in order to solve these kind of problems, we can use algebra to rearrange your formula we saw previously, or we can use this very neat trick known as the magic triangle. So let me explain how this one works. As you can see, first of all, we have the symbols for the three physical quantities we have found today. Uh, and namely, we have distance here. D stands for distance. Let's write that down, okay? We have T as time, and V, as I told you, is the symbol for speed. Now, the magic triangle works by covering the quantity you want to find. And let's see how that works. So let's start with the uh, first example, the, the formula we saw before. Let's imagine you want to, to find the speed. So I will take my hand here, this nice big friendly hand, and I'll bring it to cover the quantity I want to find, which is speed. And let's see what we're left with. We're left with distance, and this line stands for the line of fraction, for the ratio, for division. So this means distance over divided by time, which is exactly the formula we saw previously. So let's write that down again. So 
speed, which is a quantity I covered, the quantity I want to find, equals to distance over time. But let's imagine now I know my speed. I know for how much time I've been traveling. I want to know, I want to calculate the distance I covered. So I'm going to take my hand again and drag it to cover the distance. And what I'm left with is this formula here. Distance given by speed times the time. So let's write that down. So distance, there you go. Distance equals to speed times, I'm going to use the dot for symbol of multiplication, times the time. And let's finish with the last case. Let's imagine I know the speed I will be traveling. I know the distance I want to cover. I want to know how much time it will take me. So I'm dragging my, my hand here. And what do I get? That time is equal to distance over divided by speed. So let's write this here. Time equals to distance over speed. Now, in class, we're going to see how, uh, with real numerical examples, how we can calculate these quantities, speed, distance, and time. We're going to compare different speeds or different objects. We're going to see how to convert from one unit of speed into another. But for today, that is all from Mr. Buscarini. Goodbye.